Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Great. Good. So awesome to have you guys here. Give yourself a hand. This is amazing. Um, <clears throat> I'm Reverend Mark Hughes. I'm the executive director of the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance. And uh, we're here uh, for a press conference uh, to uh, acknowledge and to lift up First African Landing Day. And this is the sixth time uh, that we've uh, commemorated First African Landing Day uh, in the city of Burlington. So it's really exciting, really exciting. And there's uh, a lot to, to gain from these experiences. I would say uh, probably one of the, the, um, the biggest gains uh, that we'll see, that we have seen and will continue to see, is people are learning. People are learning. Um, for example, um, this is a, you know, we see in, what's in front of us here is, is the, um, the 1619 traveling exhibit uh, from uh, Hampton, Virginia. Uh, we've, uh, we bring the 1619 traveling exhibit in from Hampton, Virginia every year that we do this. And I think we've even had it here a couple times uh, one year. Uh, because really it marks uh, re uh, emphatically the point that we're making uh, with the arrival of the first Africans here in the English colonial United States. Uh, I, I just. Before, I get, before we get started on the press conference, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give you some idea of like, what that format's like, but there's some acknowledgments that I want to make before I get into that. Um, first of all, I want to thank God, who's my, uh, Jesus Christ, who's my Lord and Savior, and, and I just want to acknowledge um, you know, all of the, the uh, richness and power and glory that I live in as a result of his hand on my life. Amen. Um, that is, uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it unapologetically. And I also want to acknowledge my wife, who's sitting here at the table, Christine. Um, Chuck. Christine, who's sitting right here, who just puts up with me in general, who um, I, I know I've, I've che I checked out a couple weeks ago, so I'll be checking back in in a couple more days or so, but she's allowed me uh, to be able to um, pursue um, these type of things and just kind of disconnect in ways that are really not natural and or healthy. Uh, so as I continue to figure out how to work on taking care of myself, um, she uh, has certainly given me a little bit of latitude. So I want to thank you for that, honey. Um, <clears throat> and the the other four folks that I want to bring your attention to is, is this guy sitting next to me named Dalib. Um, there's a person sitting next to him named Matthias. Um, there is uh, one sitting next to him uh, named Kali. Uh, and... Christina is somewhere in the room. She must have stepped away for a minute. So these four folks here have, have shown up consistently over the last several weeks. And um, they are this, they are the f uh, first African landing um, planning and execution team. So this, this is the team, the, the team that put this entire thing together. Can you please acknowledge them? So lots of lots of stuff going on uh, over the next couple of days, but what we're here to do today is is just uh, simply memorialize more than anything um, what it is that we've done. If you look over your shoulder, uh, over to the monitor there, what you'll see is is you'll see last year's uh, press conference. We were in the same room, we were facing in the other direction, and that happened to be a year where we had all of our shirts before. The press conference started. Uh, th these shirts won't be ready for another couple hours, so we're gonna we're just gonna go ahead and go forward without them. Okay. Uh, so um, what wh what we're gonna do is is essentially just for for the record, because we are recording this up in the cloud right now. We just want to make sure that we have an opportunity to to um, to go on the record and talk about what uh, what we're here for. Um, I will look to some of you uh, for some comments, and it's gonna—it's really—it's—it's it's really up to you if you'd like to have a couple of words as well. Um, you know, a lot of times it feels like it's really un awkward and feels uncomfortable, so I don't want to force anybody. Uh, or um, um, I know maybe folks haven't prepared any remarks. I generally don't. I usually fly by the seat of my pants if that helps you at all. Um, and uh, and then after that, if there if there's any press in the room at the time. 
and it doesn't look like there's any press that has shown up today. Um, but if there were, then what we would do is, is answer questions. Uh, but we're then we'll we'll be in the room uh, after that just to kind of spend some time with each other. Um, what's happening later this afternoon at 4 p.m. I just want to let you know that uh, we'll we'll be we'll be doing um, uh, we'll be having some ice cream. Uh, and um, we're just going to sit around and, and talk about, and I'm, I'm going to really spend the time that I've done on um, three separate occasions already leading up until now and unpacking where did First African Landing Day come from? What is it? Uh, what is our hope uh, for it? What does the um, logistics and the event look like? What, what, are we, what can we expect here leading up to the actual day and what will occur and how uh, can you be uh, involved in in that activity as well on the 24th so we'll talk about all of those things leading up um, uh, after the after 4 p.m. and we'll, um, we'll we'll talk as long as we need to but no longer than about 5 30 because I'll be getting ready at that point for our um, first African landing day edition of our equal protection working group or Equal Protection Working Group is a working group that has been looking at an equal protection constitutional amendment and has been fortunate enough up until now to move that constitutional amendment through the legislature in its first half of the journey. So we'll, we'll be returning to that conversation later um, this evening. So I've got a full evening. Uh, so just wanted to set your expectations on uh, what it is um, that we would be doing. Um, we'll, we'll break up here in a minute. But before we do anything else, I'd love to get y'all to get familiar with one another because like one of the main things that I've discovered over the last several years is, is that we just sadly don't spend enough time getting to know one another. We just, we just don't. Generally, we get in a room. We, it's awkward. I'm socially awkward. Um, we get in a room and, and we, we're standoffish. We think we don't know people or we don't have association with them. But I can assure you uh, from, you know, whether it's um, the relationships that we have with Hillary and, and Alex and, and others over at the organization of Pathways or you know, historically it was Bob and, and, and now um, I, I think it's, is it Sarah or what's her name? Sandy, Sandy is there, but we know Katarina well from Howard Center. Uh, the Peace and Justice Center has been a, a part of our lives forever because Richard Kemp would served on served on the board there forever, and we know and appreciate who you are. So we've definitely um, uh, have had that opportunity. New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church is in the house. Sankofa, Rajni, these folks here. So in in some way or another, I just want and don't forget Roy over there. Somebody should just shout shout it out to Roy. Somebody should just shout. Roy, shout Roy, because he's because he's been in here working hard, getting us set up uh, technologically so we can do this, making it possible, making it possible. So I don't have to, uh, which is amazing because it would take me two days to do what he does in two hours. Uh, so thank you so much, Roy, for what it is that you do. Um, but I do I want to start over on this side of the table. And if, if what we could do is, is we could just go around the table, we'll use this as our, our talking stick, right? We'll use this as our talking stick. And how convenient is that? It actually makes noise. Um, and if you want to just introduce yourself, say who you are, what organization you, rep, uh, you represent, and you know, just give, a short, um, give us a short blurb and take your time about um, what, this, um, what this event, you know, what this event is to you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Angelina Pearson. Um, I'm from New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church. Um, and it's really important that we commemorate, I love this word, that word, I know it's tricky, right? Um, First African Landing Day. And I'm really pleased to be a part of this event because it's part of my history and my DNA. So I really, um, I'm grateful that I'm able to be amongst you fabulous folks and I look forward to having some more candid conversations with each and every one of you. Hey everyone, um, I'm Phoenix Gonzalez. Um, I descend from Irish and German and Afro-Puerto Rican people and I grew up in Maryland. 
Um, I have lived in Vermont for a little over five years now. And um, since January, I've been the director of programs at the Peace and Justice Center. So I feel like this has been um, a year of massive learning for me. And I'm not exactly sure when I first uh, walked through the doors of the Kemp Center, but it's just very grounding to know that this place exists in the community. And I know that a lot of people worked really hard to make it happen. And so I feel like I'm just really kind of like getting grounded into organizing in Vermont and trying to learn what I can for the people who have from the people who have like been around here um, for so much longer than me. And so this is just like, yeah, a great place to like root in. And this will be my first, first African landing day. So I'm excited to see what it's all about. Hello, uh, I'm Sister Sankopa, a Montpelier resident, um, originally from Hartford, Connecticut. And this is my third African Landing Day, so I feel so um, inspired to be included at this table today. And uh, I am a reparations activist, equity strategist, uh, change maker, revolutionary, and uh, a, an advocate for marginalized people. So um, I also teach uh, unra Unraveling Racialized Trauma through the use of the book My Grandmother's Hands. So it's so important to have um, joy, uh, joyful events that really procure black joy for the people. And we don't really have that in Montpelier going on. So I'm just excited to be included uh, as part of this um, this has actually helped me to transform my own activism, has inspired me to do the work that I'm doing. And I'm just so grateful to be uh, linked with this project, as well as uh, Mark and Christine. Um, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Christine. I'm the director of the Richard Kemp Center and the uh, daughter of Richard Kemp, who was such an amazing man in the community and an amazing father um in a lot of ways he was way ahead of his time he was talking about things like reparations and legalizing marijuana and all that kind of stuff a very long time ago um yeah so i'm really honored and just blessed to be the director of this center um to be mark's wife thank you mark for your incredible leadership I think sometimes Mark lose, loses track of all the things that he's accompl accomplished um, one of the things that's been on my mind a lot lately about the work that we've been doing together is that there have been so many things you know policy that that's been created this center all kinds of stuff um, and actually a lot of economic development and economic opportunity um, you see that in like the REIB office, in uh, Susana Davis's office. Um, so I really just want not that you know money and jobs is the, is the only thing, but it's it's very important, especially in a state where it's very difficult for Black and Brown people to work and sustain employment. Um, so among many things that uh, Mark and his leadership and the work in partnership with the community, both individuals and organizations, um, I just want to express my gratitude to you, Mark, and thank God for having his hand on you. Sorry, getting a little emotional. Um, so much of this is about history, and we have a Vermont legacy wall over here and there are, are just some people that are on there were contributing to that. So, I mean, it's a, it's a continual effort. So I'd really like folks, like if you take a look at that wall and you see other people or you think of other people that should be included, I do have kind of a running list, so we're working on it. 
But if anybody has any ideas about who else to add to that wall, please let me know. I'm actually, I've been in the back working on um, something for Haskell Garrett. Many of you knew him. Um, so he'll be up there. But there's so many other people too. And you all the way over there towards the door, you'll see um, kind of a little collage for New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church, which is really, really important history in the state of Vermont. It It is the only uh, black church that worships in the African-American Baptist tradition and has been here since 1989 and is still standing. So that's incredible. Um, these The youth that have been here and the work that they've done, I don't, I'm just like speechless about their willingness to show up and the work that they're doing and you'll see the result of it down at the intervail and so during that day we're actually going to be here too um and we're going to have uh some kind of shuttle bus moving people around so i would encourage people to stop by but plan to go back you know we don't we don't want to take the crowd from the intervail but we do want to keep this space open as kind of a wellness zone we'll have some ben and jerry's ice cream we'll have some music i'll be sharing more information about the the center things that we've done things that we're planning on doing um i think we have somebody coming in to do some massages for a couple hours probably in the back area and some other things so um, and also want to acknowledge CCTV for being here, who just shows up at just about everything that we do. Thank you so much, Charlie. Um, and yeah, and just welcome. If, if this is the first time you've been here, a lot of you, I think you've been here before. Um, welcome and, and thank you for being here. And oh, the other thing that I will say is that on Friday night, it happened to fall on our regular youth movie night. So we will still be doing that. And that book that's right there behind one of those computers is called Born on the Water. And Nicole uh, Hannah Jones has found a way to um, explain the history of black people in this country in a way that is really beautiful and very sensitive um, and designed to explain that to children. So we'll be showing that um, on Friday night. So if you know any youth that you might want to bring over, that would be great. Thank you. Um, my name is Kali, and I'm a junior associate for the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance. Um, I'm Christina Adolph, and I'm also a junior associate. This is my second year with Mark. And last year, I planned the Youth Center, and that was a lot of fun. This year is more broad. Um, we're planning, like, the whole event. And it's, well, just come, guys. It's going to be really fun. Um, and, yeah, we put a lot of hard work into it, and it's been a really good time working with Mark and my friends as well. Hi, my name is Matthias. I'm also a junior associate with the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance. It's my first year um, working on First African Learning Day, and it's been a journey so far, and I really like it. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Dollar Bali, and I'm also uh, working with Mark and my peers here. And I'd say this is also my first year, and um, it's been really fun. You know, I've learned a lot of new things, and I'm also here for the journey and what's more to come. <clears throat> Thanks. I, I'm going to just out you guys is, is that <clears throat> one of the things that you should know about these folks is is actually um, there there are two two sets of siblings, actually. So the the um, so Kali and uh, Dilip are brother and sister, and Matthias and uh, Christina our brother and sister. So I think that's just, to me, I just, it, it's just, it adds so much to the dynamic of how they get along. And, and, and they've also all been knowing each other um, for a number of years. There's some of them, you know, I think maybe we're in preschool together, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it's just, uh, just a, a blessing, you know, to have them, um, to have them uh, in our, our lives here and, and to, to be able to have the opportunity to work with them. Um, so, Hi, my name's uh, Maria Moore, and I am here on behalf of Pathways Vermont, a nonprofit organization. And um, Pathways is very 
honored and pleased to be able to support this event. This is my first um, time here at the center and um, as part of this event. So I just am grateful to be able to learn from you all and excited to see what you have all planned. Hello, my name's Roy V. Hill II. Privileged to be a member of the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance Steering Committee. Honored to be at this place and in your presence. Honored because of the message that you bring. Message of hope, message of leadership, message of power. Own that power. Uh, this body here exists to affirm that power in a society that in and outside of Vermont has all kinds of creative ways to deny and erase that power. <clears throat> you had endowed, you had thought about long before the foundations of this earth. So I salute you. In your presence I learn from you. And in our presence, this state beyond Burlington learns and is promoted in terms of doing the right thing. <clears throat> I am in existence for purpose, similar to you being in existence for purpose. I and the Kuka clan were born in the same state, Tennessee. <clears throat> Some 10 states later, I'm here with you. I didn't plan to come to Vermont. Maybe some of you didn't, but one thing is real. Spirit brought us here. We are here for a reason. Long ordained for this moment because we have a purpose and our going forth makes it possible for others to see the light and see the light in themselves as they too, as we go purpose and thank you for being here I'm honored to be among you thanks to the most high God and thanks for the leadership of someone like a Reverend Mike Mark and Mrs. who is the executive director of this place <clears throat> I met the dad years ago that is the dad of uh, Christine. And I didn't know that he also had that deep, deep spiritual walk. And let me tell you this, and then I'll shut up. When you do the right thing, there, there's a scripture in the Bible that comes out of a book called Ephesians. When you're doing the right thing, the adversarial spirit will attack you. And it's important to recognize that you're under attack, not because of that individual, but because of the power in that individual of negativity that's coming forth in an attempt to destroy and deny you. You who are a member of the eight billion people in this one human family on this one planet, Earth. We do our things in the community, do our thing whatever that purpose is. And then that community is a better one for the tomorrows to come. Thank you. Blessings to you, Deacon. Hill, it's a blessing to be here with all of you. I think it's so important to honor our ancestors, to share in recognition of the value of what we hold together as black people as human beings and speaking to the value of our history in this country and recognizing why it's so important for us to think deeply about how we can create unity, how we can build bridges to one another, how we can communicate directly with each other about anything, how we can hold space for the beauty and the brilliance of our people and know that that's our quest in life. I'm thankful to be here uh, for um, what I think is the third or fourth year um, consistently. I remember when it was first held 
right down uh, the street and we shared poetry in that space and my daughter was quite young then and I've seen this uh, this space grow um, in meaningful ways to inspire community to see the power and uh, brilliance of black people's legacy to know that we have something vital to bring to the world that the foundation of the human family is black people but so often we're denied our history and denied of the recognition of why we have so much in common. Even our children are always taught about the beauty and the brilliance of who we are. And sometimes we're taught misinformed ways to hate on each other and to not recognize our mutual shared value. And that causes wounds. But we are the healers and the restorers of our people. We have to be consistent in doing so. We have to honor the youth who are here burgeoning in their leadership and speak life into them to nourish and encourage them to be affirmed in their greatest value so that they can do the same for those who are next to come. So I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here with you all. I'm thankful that we have uh, so much power and strength and care and compassion for our people that we won't cease to be determined to honor our folks' legacy, that we speak life and beauty and brilliance into the truth of who we are and we won't settle for less. So thank you all for your energy towards this goal. Hello, um, my name is Katerina. My indigenous name is Cafe. I am the legacy of the Kaigangi people of southeastern Brazil, as well as the diasporic community of Afro-Brazilians. And I use they, them pronouns. I am so deeply moved by the energy in this space. And I also get to be here as a community member and as a representative of the Howard Center. I am our director of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And for those who do not know, the Howard Center strives to support those of us who are psychiatric survivors, those of us who are in recovery from and with substance use, and those of us who live with developmental disabilities. I want to say an incredible, huge thank you to the planning team. You make me so excited for this community, and you make me grateful that I live here and that I get to be part of the event. So thank you so deeply much. And I think the one thing I will offer to the room is that when I think about the mission of Howard Center, which uh, it was uh, estimated to me that we support approximately one in 10 people in Chittenden County, and we have a goal to offer the kind of radical liberatory care that we know exists through the Richard Kemp Center and the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance. Um, we have a long way to go. We have a history that we are reckoning with ourselves and a deep commitment to being steady in our pursuit of justice, compassion, and liberation for all. And we can't do that without the steady work example and invitation from radically brilliant groups like the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance and the Richard Kemp Center. So thank you so much, so happy to be here. And where do I pass this mic? Thank you, thank you for coming. So what, what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna take about um, five minutes, um, get acquainted, then what, what we'll do is, is we're gonna come back and um, I'm gonna ask if, if everybody could get on up, and this is, this is like aesthetics is all it is. It's just all we're doing is, is we're just uh, we're creating something here for others to see later. So if, what we're going to do is we're going to create an arc uh, along the, the back edge here when we reassemble. Not now, but in just take a few minutes. And then um, I will um, I'll stand in front of the mic and I will open up with the, um, you know, what First African Landing Day is and just a press conference. And um, and then I'm. Um, Maybe during this break, if you'd like to say something, if you'd just let me know what we can do is we can, I could just jot that down and I can just introduce each of you. OK, so so we'll. Uh, oh, yeah. Roy. Roy's, Roy's troubleshooting right now, but we, we still want. Yeah, we want to we want to give you an opportunity to say something. Only genius when the troubleshooting is working. When it's not working, you're like, I'm so stupid. But um, my name is Roy. Ken Roy is my first name. Feel free to call me Roy, kind of like if someone is Rob and their full name is Bob. What? what which one were those? You know, those kind of, Bobby's kind of thing. 
yeah kind of like that a lot of um in reference to how a person identifies um how what what what's in a name kind of thing so a part of my interaction here um in in reference to interacting with my community just that question of how do you like to be you know addressed and you know that's something that i haven't really been um used to a lot since moving here to vermont since 2014 so it's been 10 years um during that 10 year timeline i've gotten to know mark i've gotten to know christine i met um uh, mr uh richard camp once and that was my first first african landing day as well and i think that was the first african landing day that was at studio a and so my um introduction here is one of service doing do the work as um as the the sub model for the vermont racial justice alliance and also a little sub model for um richard chem center here what do you do in your action and one of the things that i do in my action is try to be present and utilize um skills things that i know that can help um put things together and i think that's the unique thing about this place we all can come here and give of service we all can be um, we can receive service um, we can be in a space where we can uh, communicate and com uh, commune with one another so all of the actions and activities that are here throughout the richard kemp center and exempl exemplified through the racial justice alliance here we are at the um the sixth annual first african landing day and every year trying to make sure that we get it out to the community let um, as many people know how to be a part of it, just the welcome mat, I guess. And that's something that um, I think is unique to a place, um, saying that, hey, we're here, and just kind of saying you're here. And it's kind of reflective of how, um, once again, back to the identity, how um, people of color or, or how we identify. Um, I'm from the Caribbean diaspora, so a lot of my heritage goes back to um, my ancestry coming through the the uh, the slave trade but not connecting so much as the knowledge and information that the 1619 project is bringing out so i find myself learning so much i find myself participating giving up my skill sets and talents meeting a lot of like-minded artists and individuals as well and i think it's just great that this space exists so no matter if there's um the or the quantity here just know that the quality here in vermont is re is reflecting of that as well so nice to meet every one of you uh, if you see me in the front or in the background just know that um i'm just excited to be here and it's one of my things to help mark not overdo <laughs> even though doing the work is the main thing but i'm um, overdoing and i'm um, being um in a space of wellness and 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 thinking about um, um preserving your energy as well i think we can all lean and uh, uh, lend a helping hand to one another in that effort so welcome one and all and nice to meet you good afternoon i'm reverend mark hughes i'm the executive director of the vermont racial justice alliance and welcome to our annual press conference this is a press conference on First African Landing Day, this is our sixth annual First African Landing Day. I'm really super excited uh, to be here and I'm joined with a, just a host of folks uh, that are behind me. We've got some comments that are gonna be coming from some uh, local organizers, uh, definitely some other members of the Racial Justice Alliance and partner organizations and friends of the Alliance. Uh, with that being said, um, this year does indeed mark the sixth annual uh, first African Landing Day. Um, the theme uh, this year is, is Stay the Course. Stay the Course. Uh, it's inspired by an Andrinka, uh, Andinkra symbol uh, called um, Ninchinchim, Inchinchim, which directly translates to life's journey is twisted. Uh, life's journey is twisted. Uh, th this, the theme actually it speaks to the wisdom of considering the tenacity of our ancestors as we remain responsive to the changing nature of the path that we march towards justice. Now, this, this uh, first African Landing Day, we, we embrace uncertainty and unpredictability, understanding that change is inevitable. And though our strategies, uh, they must change, our vision, our vision of justice is the same as it was since the first calls for justice over 405 years ago. The Vermont Racial Justice Alliance, we, we established uh, First African Landing Day uh, by the inspiration of the 400-year African-American History Commission. There was also some inspiration from, which came later, the 1619 Project. Many uh, know the work of N Nicole Hannah-Jones and understand the influence and impact that it has had on us nationally and indeed globally. To, to, I think, accentuate some of this, um, some of this um, inspiration, what you see behind you, 
is the 1619 Traveling Exhibit. The 1619 Traveling Exhibit, uh, which is here with us from Hampton, Virginia, uh, which is also known as the original Point Comfort where the White Lion landed in 1619 in late August. About this time in 1619, in uh, late August, uh, the White Lion there. So there the museum houses several of these um, traveling exhibits. This is one of them and it is usually here in Vermont every uh, first African uh, landing day. Now here's a factoid. Um, one of the things maybe you didn't know is, is that the, um, on the 24th of August uh, in 2019, uh, Governor Phil Scott uh, proclaimed that the fourth Saturday of every August is indeed uh, first African landing day. And this is what he said. He said, um, <coughs> Quote, uh, it shall be henceforth recognized and commemorated as First African Landing Day. So that's, uh, that is uh, Governor Scott, and that was 2019. Um, now listen, this is a time of, of bringing community together. This is a time of bringing community together. So. One of the primary focuses on 16, uh, on First African Landing Day, rather, is, is we want to come together each year at least to be able to memorialize and commemorate exactly what happened 405 years ago. However, without bringing community, get community together, it kind of defeats its purpose. We, we, we want to be able to, to come together first, so that's why we've... We've um, come together on, on, in a series of events over the last couple of weeks, uh, community dinners, community brunches, uh, and, and even this afternoon we'll be having ice cream together uh, after this here, just to be able to open up a space and bring folks in and, um, and bring community together. We're also here to learn about our nation's true history and also to embrace the hope uh, that we have for our future. So with that being said, uh, the first speaker that I wanted to introduce is uh, a good friend, a poet, a community organizer, and just an awesome man, uh, Mr. Rajni Eddins. Rajni. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, Mark, and blessings to all of you for being here to honor our ancestors. I know we have so much to hold and respect and reverence for them. Um, I want to share a piece with you just to honor the story of our people as many of you know, in recent times, our history has become increasingly under fire. The attempts to destroy the story and the narrative of black people was alive and being practiced and remounted. So for us to stand here today is no small stance. For us to be here in honor of our ancestors and, and speak truth and love and light on their legacy is a vital honoring and a reverence for them that will continue to build legacy for for children to come. So I'll share peace now in their honor and in our honor uh, for the healing and the restoration and the reclamation of our true power and rightful role in the world as black people, as the foundational humans and civilization and for sanity to the human family, to the world human family, and knowing that we are one human family and that we owe a grave debt of reverence for our original ancestors from Africa to the present. This is called Middle Passage. There should be oceans of tears. There should be oceans of tears. This ink is not my blood. What right have I to speak? What right have I to speak? Think my words the salty oblivion to swallow this globe, submerging continents, mother's one perfect tear for her children. There were children in that small cramped space giving birth in fetal position to stillborn cosmos, tiny infants with mayhem as midwife. Below deck, below death, below breath was hope hidden in heartbeat rhythm. And now sometimes I see our children are below deck crammed in into small cramped space but the wooden planks are blocks and stoops and streets. But our heart beating hope tells me we don't have to live that metaphor. For we are the lineage of stars and suns. Look at the sky and see your reflection. Forgetfulness would have us think the oceans dreamt them. 
But galaxies do litter the seafloor. No one can ever take away our B4. They sunk so that we saw they hung. So that we saw they sunk and sung with tears in their lungs so that we saw this is not a metaphor. This is not a metaphor. This ain't no metaphor, middle passage. This ain't no metaphor. This ain't no metaphor, middle passage. Thank you very much, uh, Rajni, uh, for that. I am um, going to go on to the next speaker. We, we've, uh, we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more uh, later in, in the conference about uh, some of the um, some of the purposes that we have, and, and I'm just going to kind of give a little he uh, highlight about uh, what you can expect when we have the um, uh, first African landing commemoration in, in Intervale. Uh, but until then, we do have a member of the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance, one of our, uh, one of our folks who are on our board, uh, and also uh, one of the founding members of New Alpha, New Mich New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, that is uh, my friend Deacon uh, Roy V. Hill II. Thank you, Executive and Reverend Mark. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters out here. Thank you for your attendance. I, as was indicated, am a member of the steering committee of the Racial Justice Alliance. And at the same time, I walk with my feet in two foundations, A, the faith community, and B, education. What are the thing, one of the things that the faith community scripture speaks to is, quote, with all of you get, with all of that that, that you get, get understanding, get understanding. And with the first African landing day, we bring to the body in and outside of the state remembrance of what and who we are all about as a people, pre and post. 1619, pre-1619, that reminds us, going back to Timbuktu, of the genius, the creativity, the development in arts and science of who we are and what we have continued, have contributed then in the 14th century and what we continue to contribute to the whole of this country, to the whole of humanity right now. pre 1619, we had those skills. Post-1619, when those who thought ill along their incessant create walk to steal, to kill, to rob, to deny, they reached out to us as a people, a people, in, a people who were endowed with multiple skills and we came to this country and in this country even though we were denied our skills were not we were the ones who brought the skills of working on farms working in agriculture and systematically one invention after another although denied the ownership and acknowledgement of those contributions this country took advantage of those contributions. There was a time after the Civil War that said, here, you will have 40 acres and a mule. We never received those 40 acres and a mule. But on that land that was taken from us, we worked the land. We made it possible for the economy to be, to exist. And for that matter, those contributions were embraced around the world, but we were not given the credit. We were not given the, resp the accountability and love for what we did. In spite of that, the truth cannot be, deni can be denied. And that truth comes forth when we have the opportunity, when we have institutions like the Richard Kemp Center institutions like First African Landing Day, which is a horn that speaks truth to injustice, motivates young people, generation, intergenerational, you might say, looking at the brilliance that we see in our boys and girls, 
those in middle school and high school and accomplishments in and through colleges and universities. We remind people, we who are the body of the first African Landing Day and standing tall so that others can hear the truth, recognize the truth, and be motivated to not only acknowledge truth, but to go forth with what? Love. Go forth with what? Truth. Go forth with what? Respect. Go forth with what? Accountability. Go forth with what? Making a difference for the futures to come. And those who know us from this day will have more to stand on into their future. I thank you for being here. And I thank my colleagues who are here with me as we applaud who we are as a people made in the image and likeness of the Most High God. Thank you. Thank you, Roy, that's amazing. I brought with me, I just brought back up here, this is, this is that um, proclamation uh, from the governor. I've always, I always carry this around, uh, it's kind of like a, it's, I pick it up and I look at it, and I'm like, that's so cool that the governor did that, you know, and, and, a, and the story behind it is, is that it was Susanna Davis who actually walked in the room with it in her hand on the first, the very, very first, remember the first time, first time we were there, uh, Richard Kemp was in the house uh, as well, uh, so yeah, it, and th the irony is, is that it was actually signed on the 24th of August in, uh, in uh, uh, 2019. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited, pretty stoked. There's going to be uh, dancing, uh, food, music, uh, speakers, exhibits, drumming, a youth hangout. I've got four youth behind me that have been planning this thing, the whole thing, for weeks and weeks now. So that's pretty amazing. There's going to be... Um, uh, a group, a, a couple of folks who, who were coming up from, uh, believe it or not, Sumter, South Carolina. You know, now for those of you who know history, uh, coming up from Sumter, South Carolina, the group's name is Maximum Impact. Uh, they, they've appeared in hundreds of venues in cities across the breadth of the United States, poetizing for gangsters and governors from neighborhoods to Hollywood and schools and churches and clubs and parks and prisons, positively changing minds and touching the lives of people across all societies. These guys are inspirational out of Sumter, South Carolina, um, a, a multi-published, multi-recorded sp spoken word artist, slavery abolitionist, and a social justice activist, as well as a book publisher. Uh, and a, a jewelry a, a jewelry designer, multi-recorded and published spoken word artist, and the author of eleven books. So it's Max Parthis, his his uh, wife Tribal Rain. Uh, together they're called uh, Maximum Impact. So they're going to be on the agenda. You don't want to miss these guys. So just wanted to give you a a, a um, kind of highlight of that. And I'm not going to hold you because I do want to hear uh, from my sister from the Howard Center, director of DEI. Uh, this is Katarina Campbell. I'm short, so I always have to move the mic. I think I'm good. Thank you. This event, the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance and the Richard Kemp Center, are love made visible. I am here from the Howard Center, where we strive to support our people who experience psychiatric crisis are in recovery from substance use, and live with developmental disabilities. It is an honor to be connected to this community and this initiative, the powerhouse of these community members and these leaders in any way. And when I imagine the type of care, compassion, and dignity that all of our people deserve, and look for examples of what it means to reckon with and honor the trauma of the past while healing and being imaginative for the future, I need look no further than the folks behind me, than Reverend Mark Hughes, than Christine, than all the people who make this possible. So thank you so much for setting the example, and we will do the best we can to follow. I'm just, a, I'm just a little bit taller. <clears throat> not much, though. Not much. Not a whole lot. One of the things that um, I, I like to do is just kind of talk a little bit about the uh, formation 
of First African Land and Day. Now, there's going to be some time, some period after to, after now, after now, like later in the afternoon here in this place, we're going to talk more about where First African Landing Day came from. But I'm just going to give you a little bit uh, because, again, remember we talked about the 400-year African-American uh, History uh, Commission. The 400-year African-American History Commission uh, is a federally appointed committee operating uh, independently as established by the Secretary of the Department of Interior and administered by the National Park Services. The 400-year African-American History Commission, uh, it was signed into law, get this, on January 8th, 2018. Stop. Think. Who is the president? <laughs> I don't know how that got by him. But anyway, so um, th th that was 2018. Um, established this 15-member commission to coordinate the 400th anniversary of the arrival of enslaved Africans in the English colonies. Now, it's important to state that just as sure as the white lion arrived on the coast of what is now um, Hampton, Virginia, before the Mayflower, that this actually happened before the 1619 project of Nicole Hannah Jones as well. Okay, just want to put that out there because it was the it would be the next year in August. In fact, the same month that we had our first first African Landing Day commemoration was when <clears throat> the Pulitzer Prize winning 1619 project dropped in the New York Times. So. All of this stuff kind of converges together. Uh, what we know is, is that the 400-year anniversary of the arrival of first enslaved Africans uh, in uh, the English colonies, uh, it was acknowledged as of August 20th, uh, 1619. It was uh, then when, quote, 20 enslaved Africans were brought to Point Comfort in the English colony of Virginia, uh, and that is um, now the Monroe National Monument. So that's kind of the, where we built the building blocks of um, what it is that we're doing now, what it is that we're actually commemorating now. I want to talk a little bit before we move on about another very, very important guest that we're uh, having. She's coming in out of Washington, D.C. Her name is Nkichi Taifa, Taifa and she's an attorney. In, uh, Nkichi Taifa has been a power player and a catalyst in reparations, in the reparations movement for over 40 years. A founding member of the National Coalition of Blacks and Reparations in America, that's in COBRA, if you're familiar, established in 1987. Taifa, she served as, as, as its first legislative commission chair for years and years. Uh, and she also helped provide guidance, watch this, and a counsel to Congressman John Conyers in the initial drafting of the federal bill, in the initial drafting of the federal bill, H.R. 40. So attorney Taifa is one of the most knowledgeable and one of the longest serving experts in the U.S., uh, in the United States, constantly engaged, constantly engaged in all kinds of issues of reparations of black folks across the United States, decades prior uh, to its, um, this current level uh, of popularity. Now, she is a, a strong collaborator uh, with black-led as well as non black led uh, organizations and movements and regularly serves as a trusted uh, resource in, in issues to the to the media to the legislature to educators to philanthropy to nonprofits uh, and businesses and celebrities and influencers so we are stoked to have her coming in she's going to be in tomorrow night uh, she's going to be in um, in town for several days uh, we've already got we've we've pulled some books off the shelf. She's going to be here to be sh uh, sh signing rather uh, reparations on fire. So she'll be speaking uh, with to us at the intervale. And there's a possibility we may have a special session here at the Richard Kemp Center later. And speaking of reparations, I have a reparations activist and equity strategist and a community advocate for marginalized communities with us today. And her name is Sister Sankofa. Hello, uh, my name is Sister Sankofa, um, and I want to just say that I'm a reparations activist, equity strategist, and a community advocate for marginalized people. Um, I just recently, about two months ago, chose that name for myself um, as I received it from the, from the heavens. 
Uh, so my name means S A N K O F A, San Kofa, means to go back and get what you have left behind. And that is from the Twi language of the Ghanaian people. And as we celebrate First African Landing Day, it is time for us to claim our sovereignty, claim our joy, claim our healing. And it is so important that we have these events to just reestablish oneness with one ourselves, our community, and with the higher, the higher beings. Um, I really feel that black joy is so important as an oppressed peoples since, um, you know, we landed in this country. It is our right to reclaim ourselves, reclaim our families, reclaim our dignity as a human race. Race is a social construct. We are human race. That is the only race. And when people start to recognize and realize that being the truth, then we can all be set free. So um, as we go forward in the sixth uh, first African Landing Day, I just want to remind people that you have the power to set yourself free, liberate yourself, love yourself, love others. But we have to um, just start saying no. I'm calling this for myself the year of the no. No more. No more oppression, degradation, um, feeling constricted or cast out. So we need to be part of um, something bigger here in Vermont. And I'm so grateful for these moments of black joy where we can celebrate and reclaim our love for ourselves and our community. And I'm so proud to be part of this. And I, you know, pray that this uh, event would be flourishing for all. Um, and it really speaks to the work of the great work of the Richard Kemp Center and the legacy that is going forward. So I want to say to um, Richard Kemp, who I've never had the pleasure of meeting, I uh, want to say thank you. Thank you for planting the seeds of hope, of love, of resilience. Thank you for your ancestors or your uh, offspring who have risen up to uh, take on the mantle of the call to go forward. Christine and Mark, want to say thank you to you. And I want to say thank you to all of you who uh, will join us as we go forward to, to this year, to next year, and the year after. Um, and I just want to depart with blessings as we all try to do our best to heal um, as a community, as a state, as a country, with our elections coming up don't lose yourself heal yourself and get with others who are supportive to that narrative to heal not extract to give back what you have have lost and left behind thank you that was amazing thank you thank you so much and you know i was thinking about in chin chin I said in chin chin. Somebody say in chin chin. In chin chin. In chin chin. In chin, -chin. In chin, -chin. In chin, -chin.
and team team. The, kid, the, the, the youth, they mess around with me all of the time because they're, they're, I, I see, especially Dalib, he's up there. He's just saying it to himself every now and then. He's just in team team, in team team. And I look, I say, man, what are you doing? So he's practicing. He's practicing. He's practicing on saying this road is twisted. This road ahead of us it, there's, is filled with unpredictabilities. It's, and that, that, that statement right there, especially for those of us who are marching towards justice, for those of us who are, who are hoping uh, for, for, for a brighter future for our children, uh, for those of us who, are, who are, have great expectation uh, that, that the March for Freedom uh, will uh, take us to, uh, to, to, to a place where, where, that we'd envisioned, uh, that every now and then things change up. Every, every now and then, you know, you look around and you think you're going in a, a certain direction. And what happens is, is the road changes or the, the circumstances change. All of a sudden, uh, uh, a decision comes down from the United States Supreme Court. Don't get me started. Or something happens. And, and we, so we have to adjust. We have to adjust. And that's how, that's how, life, that's how life is. We, some of us know that all things work for the good of those <laughs> who are called. <laughs> Um, so it doesn't really make any difference. We got to still be able to be nimble uh, to be able to say, hey, um, my my strategy has to change. My my the my hope and my vision has re it remains the same. But the strategy every now and then has to change. And that is where we get. That's where we get uh, the um, the um, the theme for this year, um, the theme for this year. So just wanted to make sure that um, we're on board with that. Just understanding uh, the theme is um, what? Stay the course. Stay the course. Uh, it is stay. The course. All right, stay the course. Stay the course. So it doesn't make any difference which direction this thing is going. We just got to. We just. We need to make sure we're following that path. I just wanted to say briefly. Um, you know, over the number last number of years, where we've been, where we've been coming from is is you know from. I know that in, in um, the first year uh, we met, um, we, we talked about black resilience, black power, mm -hmm. black resilience, mm -hmm. black power, black resilience, black, black power. power. And, and then the, the next year, even though we were in the middle of COVID, we had no idea. I have no idea what our theme was that year, but I know we met. I know we met. So um, then I know in 2021, um, we, we moved on and we got to a place where it says, there it is, out of the darkness. And then on the back it says, into the light, into the light, out of darkness, into the light. Yeah, if you stick around long enough, you're going to be rocking these T-shirts. I, I, I think I might have one on. Um, and, then, and then the following year it was, we've come this far by faith. We've come this far by faith. We've come this far by faith. And each, each year, as, you, as we start, as we come up with these themes, these, it's not like we, we walk out into a parking lot and stick our finger up and see which way the wind blows. These, these, are, these are inspired themes. Inspired themes, and they are, they are life-informed themes. And, and they come from the heart of the work that the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance is doing. They come from the heart of the work that we're doing. So when we, when we talk about these themes about um, through the fire, which was last year, through the fire, that, that, that was saying something, that it reflected the role that, that uh, we've come this far by faith, reflected the role that faith has played in the lives and the descendants of, of slavery in their journey from 1619 to present. From the Middle Passage, the auction block, the toils of slavery, the convict leasing, sharecropping, lynching, the old Jim Crow, a constant anthem has remained. Through persecution and criminalization of civil, uh, the civil rights movement, a justice system that has never delivered equal protection under the law, and a present day struggle of ongoing systemic racism, American descendants of slavery have truly come this far by faith. So when you, and you look at through the fire, what we did is it embodied the resilience and the strength of African Americans uh, through slavery, of, of the American descendants of slavery. Again, when we start talking about through the fire, we're talking about going through something. For over 15 generations, black folks in the United States have consistently triumphed over seemingly insurmountable odds. Through the fire symbolized a remarkable ability of black Americans, to t black Americans to take decisive actions and to access untapped spirit, ingenuity, and creativity in the face of adversity. 
I, I should get at least one witness here today. Okay. Throughout history, this journey has deepened our faith and instilled unwavering optimism and hope and propelled us to unimaginable, unimaginable levels of excellence mm. as black folks. So what, what we're talking about here, and I'm excited now, I'm really fired up about what we're getting ready to do. And I'm going to put the director of the Richard Kemp Center on notice because she didn't know it, but she's got something to say before we, we finish. But what I will say is, is this, is, is that there is, there is a lot to talk about once you peel back the erasure and the appropriation of the culture of the American descendants of slavery. And you begin to reconstruct that, and you begin to pull that all together. You begin to find common ground where, where black folks from the diaspora can come together and share a hope in our, in our unified culture. That is where our power comes from. That is the essence, that is the heart of First African Landing Day, and our white brothers and sisters can enjoy this with us as well. Mm -hmm. that, is why we were, that is why we are here. That is why we are called. That is what we're here to do. It is about our resilience. It is about our power, and it is about our contribution. Everything that has been historically erased or appropriated. That is why we were here, so we, can tell the, so we can tell the true story of the United States of America, a rich and a proud nation, a nation that we can all happily and proudly call home. Despite the, the, the errors that were made in our history, this is the United States of America, and this is the place that we all call home. So I'm glad to say uh, that today I'm, I'm, we're joined with the director of the Richard Kemp Center, and during this time of uh, First African Landing, uh, there's going to be some some things that are happening in the Richard Kemp Center, and I w would would hope that she would be able to express that to us and any other thoughts she might have. The director of the Richard Kemp Center, my wife, Christine Hughes. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mark. Um, yeah. So, I we spend a lot of time thinking about. And as has been said here today, there's so much history and so many contributions that have people have attempted to erase them. I'm not thoroughly convinced that they're actually erased because they do exist in some way or another. And it's really frustrating and it's maddening and it's in, insulting and, and all of that. But the on the other side of it, uh, like, you know, in terms of the cup is half full it actually presents us with an opportunity to discover things together and learn about this history. I know that there are a lot of people in this community, a lot of people in this country that don't even know what the meaning behind um, First African Landing Day is in the 1619 Project. So it is, I am kind of encouraged about being on that journey, especially with young people to be able to um, explore and share true history um anybody who visits the center you'll see back here there's a thing that's updated on a daily basis and it says this day in history and i promise you there is at least one very often more than one very significant event that we can put up there on the board every single day 365 days a year and of course we're continuing to make history and we keep all of that in a binder up there so i would encourage people to sit down with that you know the couches are over there and just thumb through it and i promise you you'll find something that you didn't know the other thing that um as far as what will be happening the day uh on saturday here um, we're going to have, it's going to be sort of a wellness zone. We're going to be moving people around. So we want folks to just kind of come through. We'll have Ben and Jerry's ice cream, some other kind of snacks, you know, hopefully some healthy snacks. Sha'an Moulier will be here with the I Am Vermont 2 project. That is a, an amazing uh, project that she does with photography and really giving voice to the experience of black and brown people in Vermont, which if you have had that experience. I've had that experience since I was about eight years old. And it is unique and difficult and challenging. Um, what else are we going to have? We're going to all kinds of wellness things. We're going to have um, somebody here doing massages. So I encourage people to join us for that day. And um, yeah, 
thanks. I think that's all I got. She always does that to me. It's like as soon as I think she's on a roll, she's like, and that's it. And I'm, I'm like five miles away from the microphone. So, so, so I want to just uh, appreciate everyone who has shown up. I want to um, especially acknowledge these four um, young youth that are standing behind me uh, who put this thing together. Uh, these guys, um, that's right, Christina, um, Kali, uh, Dalib, uh, as well as um, Matthias. Uh, these, these four folks right here are going to go down in history. So when you, when you start uh, thinking about what uh, we did this year, uh, these are the folks that you can look to. Um, hopefully it'll be each one, teach one. Uh, we'll, you know, as we move forward, this will be the beginning of the, the, uh, the, the legacy transition uh, where we, we can begin to step back. I know there are some, there are some who still need to step up, um, but uh, we at the same time we we want to we want to teach these youth as much as we can, and we also want to learn as much as we possibly can uh, from them uh, through uh, black leadership. Um, the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance uh, addresses the root causes and impacts of systemic racism uh, with a data-driven approach uh, that includes solutions ranging uh, from uh, platforms and initiatives. Uh, outreach and education, uh, community engagement and support, and cultural empowerment. This is the capstone of all of the cultural empowerment work that we do. We're looking forward to seeing you at Intervale Center and here. Um, let's commemorate First African Landing Day together. Thank you.